Hi, today I will talk about some strategies and tools that we used to build the front, Merpe front-end UI library. My name is Marco Solazzi, and I am a front-end engineer at the Merpe front-end team. Before diving into today's topic, let's look one moment at the past of front-end development. So for front-end developers in the years around 2010, the most common challenge was to find the right carousel plugin with the right features that would probably not crash Internet Explorer. Then, a few years later, we will find the same developers looking for the best front-end framework to build single-page applications. Nowadays, developers face multiple times the same challenge called build a component library. As before, there are many possible solutions and tools to use. Let's see how we defined our stack at Merpay. But before starting, there is a disclaimer. So our component library is used on internal tools only. So I won't be able to show screenshots or code sample, but yeah, Basically, this talk is not about building components. As I said, it's more about uh, the strategies and tools behind the scene. So I don't think this is going to be uh, a big problem. That said, OK, this, there is basically uh, only one important point when it comes to building a component library. Know what you are doing. OK, maybe let's say that this should be the case for all kind of development. But anyway, uh, to know what you're doing, the first step is to clarify your mission, what you want to achieve. In our case, our mission is to make a component library that developers can fall in love with. Because if developers love your library, they will probably be willing to contribute with new features. And also, maybe they will forgive some bugs. On the other hand, developers who find it hard to work with your library will probably end up creating their own components, making all of your efforts basically useless. So. Once you have defined the mission, it's time to make it more concrete and translate it into a goal. Our goal is to create an organized set of shareable Vue.js components with simple DX and consistent design and user experience. So let's see why these keywords, the organized, simple DX, design, and UX are important to create a lovable component library. Let's start with the first keyword, organized. So organized library are easy to navigate and to browse. This area involves topics like naming conventions for components, props, and attributes. But here, we are talking about tooling. So we want to focus on one aspect, one specific aspect, which is the define the components layer. Basically, we want to categorize components into layers. You will also find this called tiers. Uh, we can define three basic layers, the core, is the component, the layer where uh, we can include design tokens for colors or spacing. Uh, also in the core, we can include base components like buttons, tables, dialogues, and all basic interactions. Then there's the second layer, which includes uh, more specialized components like forms, components, inputs, selects, and layout components, like layout primitives or grids, for example, or also layout blocks, like 
top bars, big navigations, containers. The third layer is the layer related to the project, is the layer related to the, your end user um, definitions. So in this layer, usually developers uh, include their own specific components that are not included in the previous layers. So our component library focuses on the first two layers, defining three distinct packages, the core, the form, and the layout. Once defined how we want to organize our components, we can define the foundation of our component library. In our case, we decided to go with a monorepo structure. We use PMPM as package manager because it is fast. It has efficient memory management and supports workspaces. Then we selected the Turbo Repo as a task runner. Turbo Repo has many merits. Some are that it supports cached builds and it supports a clear task dependency graph in a single configuration file. And it is also one single executable file, which helps basically reducing the size of the node modules folder. As for publishing, we choose Lerna. Of course, there are some other popular options, like for example, Chainset, but Lerna fits better in our workflow. Our workflow is based on conventional commits. Um, and so Lerna supports the, this kind of workflow to determine the new version of a package and also supports independent versioning. The last part is the CI. So we selected GitHub Actions. GitHub Actions are easy to set up and also uh, this tool integrates very well with our current infrastructure since we use GitHub. By using this setup, we also noticed uh, some, improvement, some improvements in the build process compared with our existing setup. So our starting point was Circle CI with NPM and Lerna, and our CI time was 14 minutes. So just switching to PMPM and Turbo Repo uh, cut the CI time to 6.5 minutes, which is a pretty big improvement. Then switching to GitHub Action sadly increased the CI time at around eight minutes. But yeah, I guess that we can improve this by reviewing our workflow setup and in the end, uh, the, the setup and the developer experience of GitHub Actions is so much more smooth that it is a good compromise. OK, let's move to the second keyword, uh, the developer experience. So the concept of developer experience is very similar to that of user experience. You cannot design the best workflow for every developer. Instead, you want to define the main use cases you want to cover. So to define our use cases, we have defined three main areas. Uh, the first one is the module types, which kind of JavaScript modules we want to support. Our decision went for ES modules by default and common JS fallback were needed. The second area is bundlers. Since we are working in a Vue.js environment, we went for supporting Vue CLI, which is basically Webpack, and VIT. The third area is frameworks, which frameworks we want to support. And in our case, the framework is Nuxt.js. 
Now we have defined our use cases. And uh, now we can make a list of artifacts that we need to deliver. The first one is that we want our packages to be installable as Vue.js plugins. We also want to have to have this package configurable as Nuxt.js modules because we are going to support Nuxt.js. We also want to ship our components as Vue.js single file component modules. There are some reasons to this. Uh, first of all, Vue CLI and VIT support single file components in node module packages. And in this way, the single file components are compiled based on the end user setup. And this gives us the ability to support different configuration, different browser versions. The last point is that we want to uh, ship TypeScript declaration files, even if we don't want to force our users to use TypeScript. So given these requirements, we can finally select the build tools we want to use. We went for Unbuild. Unbuild has many merits. It's a package uh, developed by the Nuxt.js team. It is a single build tool with a pretty simple setup and it features two build modes. The first one is bundle build and is powered by rollup and esbuild. So in this mode, the bundler outputs a single bundled file. And we can use this mode to bundle the Vue.js plugin, the Nuxt module, and also extract the TypeScript declarations. Then there's the second build mode, which is bundleless build. This is powered by another tool developed by the Nuxt.js team, which is mkdist. With mkdist, we can apply a sort of light transpilation of Vue.js single file component modules, which basically strips uh, the TypeScript declarations from the module into individual component TypeScript declarations. So this is a very good solution for Vue.js libraries. Uh, but of course, there are uh, some great alternatives for other kinds of stacks. Two examples are TSDX, which is a very complete all-rounded tool. Uh, it has support for monorepo and also integrated testing and linting features. Another alternative is microbundle. Uh, it is the bundler that powers uh, Preact, for example. And it is basically an optimized rollup bundler with uh, out-of-the-box support for ES modules, TypeScript, and JSX. Now we have covered the, the build tools, uh, but of course, what about documentation? So documentation is an important aspect of a good developer experience. In our case, we uh, are using Storybook to power our documentation. Storybook has some very important merits. So first of all, it can also be used as a developer development environment to create and to build components in isolation. It is also pretty easy to uh, document uh, component variants. Uh, and it also has a great built-in markdown documentation support. On the other hand, uh, Storybook sometimes it is a bit difficult to customize if you want to apply, to apply for example, a theming to the canvas. Um, and overall, at least 
until now, it is sometimes a bit slow at first startup and at building time. So Storybook is a, is a tool that either you love or hate. So there are, of course, some good alternatives that you could use uh, for few JS uh, environments. Uh, you could use Histoir or Vue Style Guidist. If your stack is based on React, you can use React Style Guidist or Ladder. And then there is Vitbook, which is uh, a sort of storybook powered by Vit, and it is much more framework agnostic. Of course, if you don't need a development environment, uh, you can choose a documentation only tool. There are many, many tools. Maybe mm, some popular options are Docusaurus uh, powered by React. Uh, so this is maybe the most uh, popular option. Then there's ViewPress and VidPress. Uh, this is very good for uh, view environment. Uh, and also there's Markdoc. Markdoc is a pretty new project. It has been developed by the Stripe team for their public documentation. Okay, so we come to the last part set of keyword. So the design and user experience. So the key for great user experience is to keep a high standard of consistency and usability. Consistency and usability can be achieved focusing on three key areas. The first one is component testing. Component testing is critical to prevent bugs and regressions. So at the moment, uh, our current setup is using Jest, but we are also exploring other options like Vitest, which is a version of Jest uh, built on uh, Vit. And it is at the moment uh, the default options for, uh, view, uh, for the view ecosystem. And we are also exploring Cypress component testing. The second area is accessibility audit. So this area refers to automatic accessibility audits. Uh, so even if this kind of audits uh, cover just a limited percentage of issues, it's basically a good practice to use them for basic CI check and to ensure a minimum level of accessibility. So our current workflow is to reuse the story we have created in Storybook, render them, load them, and render them into the Cypress component testing environment, and run a tool called Axe. Uh, to run an accessibility audit on the render components. So the merit of this workflow is that basically we are reusing our stories, so we don't need other test files. And by using Cypress component testing, we render the component in a real browser, making it possible to check also things like uh, color contrast. The third and last area is uh, visual regression testing. This is very critical to ensure that the UI looks good and that our PRs don't break anything. So our current setup uses Rag Suite. Uh, the merit of this tool is that it is self-hosted. So it is very flexible and can be hosted basically everywhere. Uh, of course, because it is self-hosted, 
there are some demerits. The, the most important one is that it might take some time to configure all the workflow. So if you instead prefer something more simple to set up, there are some options. The first one is Chromatic, which is a tool created by the Storybook team. So it is uh, based uh, on Storybook and fits better if you already have Storybook in place. And the other one is Percy, which is another great tool for visual regression testing. Uh, it has uh, lately been acquired by browser stack. So if it's if you're ready, for example, use browser stack or if you want to use browser stack. Okay, mm, here we come to the final slide, the closing remarks. So as we said at the beginning of this of this talk, uh, building a component library is a matter of love. And having a clear strategy is the key to choose the right tools to create component libraries that other developers will love to use. And that's all. Thank you very much. <laughs>